Number 64, integrated concepts. What force must be supplied by an elevator cable to produce an acceleration of 0.8 meters per second squared against a 200 Newton frictional force if the mass of the loaded elevator is 1500 kilograms? All right, so we have a little picture. The elevator's over here. It's accelerating upwards, right? Therefore, the direction that the elevator's traveling is also directly up. And that's gonna be important when we try to detail where the frictional force is. Remember, friction always opposes motion. So um, let's first start by trying to draw the forces on this elevator. So first, the first force that we always start with since we realize that the object is uh, accelerating in the y direction, it has to, whoops, that's really crooked. The um, acceleration has to overcome the weight of the elevator, right? And remember the weight of the elevator is equal to mg. So we know the mass, we can just plug in the 9.80 for the gravity and we can find it, easy peasy. Realize also just what I mentioned before, the force, the, excuse me, the frictional force will be pointing also in the downward direction. Reason being is because friction always opposes the motion, right? So this represents the force of friction and the, they told us, right? The frictional force was 200 Newtons. Now, um, since there is an acceleration upwards and there's no other forces that are apparent, you know, that were given in the problem, uh, since there is a an, an acceleration of the positive y direction, we also know that there must be some, right, force in that y direction, positive y direction. So I'll call this the applied force. We don't know what that is. But we do know a formula, right, uh, one of Newton's laws that wrote, that talks about how the forces are related to accelerations. And if we recall what that formula is, the formula is the sum of the forces Right, some of the forces in the y direction, uh, the, in this case, is gonna be equal to the mass of the object that is accelerating multiplied by the acceleration of that object in that direction. So all the y forces I have detailed, the applied force pulling it up, the weight pulling it down, and the frictional force also opposing the motion going in the negative y direction. So now we're gonna have the, uh, let's just plug in the forces. So we have the applied force here, minus the force of friction because it's in the negative y, minus the weight because that's also in the negative y, will equal the mass, uh, multiplied by the uh, acceleration in the y direction. So to solve for the applied force here, we would just have to simply write, add these two terms on over to the right-hand side. So let's just uh, do that quickly. So here we have the applied force is going to be equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration in that y direction, plus the frictional force, right? Plus then the weight. And remember the weight is just mg, so I'm already gonna plug in mg here, okay? Now what, so this is really our formula to calculate. All right, the forces, we should know everything else and we should be able to calculate this simply. So now the applied force will be equal to the mass of the uh, object that is accelerating. So that's the elevator and the elevator's mass is 1500 kilograms as they, as they told us there. Multiplied by that acceleration, it's in the positive y direction, right? It's pointing up. So therefore it's gonna be 0.8, okay? Plus then the frictional force they told us was 200 Newtons plus then the mass times the gravity, right, which is the weight of the elevator. So again, it's 1,500 kilograms multiplied by 9.80. And after we just plug this all into our calculator, we'll get the answer, right? So let's do 1,500 times 0 0.8 uh, plus 200 plus 1,500 times 9.8. And we get a value of 1.61 times 10 raised to the fourth times 10 raised to the fourth, and that is in terms of Newtons. So that is the force applied to accelerate that elevator, and that's the force to overcome both the frictional force and the weight of the elevator, and right cause it to accelerate 0.8 meters per second squared. Letter B. How much work is done by the cable in lifting the elevator 20 meters? Okay, so now we're dealing with work. We wanna find the work of the cable, and we know the force, right, applied by the cable. So we gotta think, do we know any formulas that relate, you know, force, distances, and energies, and work, right? Yes, we do, it's over here on the right-hand side, right? So uh, that's gonna be the formula we're gonna use now for letter B. So let's do letter B right over here, so letter B. Let me also put A over here so we don't lose track. So let's start with that formula. So we have that the work uh, done by the cable, okay, will be equal to the force of the cable, which remember in my problem here, I just called the force applied. All right, so I could write just FA. Uh, multiplied by the distance that the cable moves or the object it moves. I mean, the cable's gonna move, you know, 20 meters because the elevator car is moving 20 meters. Multiplied then by the cosine of the angle between these two uh, 
vectors, the force and the distance. So remember, the force applied here is pointing up. What's the motion of the object? It's also going up. So therefore, the angle between those two, since they're pointing in the same direction, would be zero. All right, cosine of zero is just one, so this whole term just cancels. So now the work, then, of the cable will simply be the force applied. So that's 1.61 times 10 to the fourth, multiplied by that distance of 20 meters. All right, so the work done here is going to be simply... Uh, 3.22, so here we have 3.22 times 10 raised to the 3, 4, 5, times 10 raised to the 5, and that now is in terms of joules, all right, because we're talking about work. Great, that takes care of letter B. Let's move on to letter C. Uh, what is the final speed of the elevator if it starts from rest? All right, so um, what's the final speed? We can definitely do this in a, I, we could probably do this in a few ways, but one way that I'm just naturally thinking of here is doing it in a kinematics, uh, from a kinematics perspective, right? So what do we know? We know the initial speed is zero. They just told us that. We're looking for the final velocity, okay? We know the acceleration of this object. It's 0.8, right, meters per second squared. Um, we also know the distance it's going to travel, right? They told us the distance or the displacement, it's 20 meters, Okay, so the question is, do you know a formula that relates these three variables from kinematics? And yeah, you should, right? One of the formulas is the final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two multiplied by the acceleration multiplied by the displacement. So basically I'm looking for final velocity, right? So that means I got to square root both sides if I want to solve this thing. So the final velocity, right, would be equal to the square root of this whole side, okay? So now what I'm going to do, just to save space, I'm going to write square root, and now I'm going to plug in my initial velocity, which is just zero, plus then two times the acceleration, uh, which they told us was 0.8 in the positive y direction. And then the displacement's also in the positive y, so that's simply 20. And now all we need to do is just calculate. So the final velocity here should be square root of two times 0.8 times 20, and we get 5.66. So we get a value here of five point, make that a little neater, five, 0.66 meters per second. That is the final velocity. Okay, great. And now letter D. Uh, so how much work went into thermal energy? All right, so letter D. So we have to think about, well, right, the, the work that goes into thermal energy is the uh, work done by non-conservative forces. And we have to remember that friction is one of those non-conservative forces. Right? It takes energy out of the system and converts it into heat energy, essentially. Right, So really what I'm focusing in on, I'm focusing in on the 200 Newton frictional force. Right, So I need to find the work done. I know the, the force, and I also know how far this thing traveled. So I'm thinking about how do I relate work, force, and distance. And oh, right, it's this guy again. Right, So simply the work due to friction, Okay, which would be then the work that went into thermal energy, is equal to the force of friction multiplied by the distance the object traveled, multiplied uh, then by the cosine of the angle between those two vectors, the force and the distance. Now here's the thing, where's the force of friction pointing in our picture? It's pointing down, right? Where is the, uh, what, what direction is this elevator traveling? It's going up. So what's the angle between these two? It's gonna be 180, right? So if I keep that in mind here, when I calculate for the work due to friction, it should be negative because it pulls energy out of the system. All right, so the force here is 200. The distance was 20 meters. And it's the cosine then of the angle between them is was 180. So the work due to friction here will be equal to, so we get 200 times 20 and then times uh, cosine of 180. So this comes out to be 4,000, right? So in terms of sig figs, it should be 4.0. Zero, zero times 10 to the third, right? Let me just make sure, yep, times 10 to the third, and that is in terms of joules, right? And that is a negative value. Now, in terms of, you know, giving the answer, you don't necessarily have to state it as a negative value uh, because they're asking you directly for the work of thermal energy, okay? So you can just give the answer in the positive form instead of in the uh, negative form. But, you know, technically, according to the equation, the value here should be negative. All right, so guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button. That would be awesome. And if this video helped you out at all, hit that like button too. I wouldn't mind.
Thank you so much. Have a great day.